We got a new name on the block for Cosmonarchy 1v1s. We're going to be watching EUD's Terran against Leviathan, who is a new player uh, to Cosmonarchy, but not a new to RTS. He's been around for a while, playing at a high level in StarCraft 1. Let's see what he's got. We are on Shambler's latest map for this. Again, the codename was like Shattered Temple or something like that. Uh, we have Leviathan in the top left as the Zerg player and EUD in the bottom left as the Terran player. And it's a four spawn map, so you know it's going to be interesting. We're gonna have a lot more of these in the Royal Invitational for May, which is coming up maybe a couple weeks after the conclusion of the throne room set for Acropolis number one. So you can check that out a little bit later. Of course, you can pop into our Discord server if you wanna join us in this endeavor and eventually maybe play in those kinds of tournaments, you know, depending on how things go. Other than that, I just want to point out that, hey, dude, we got Levy here playing some uh, some Z. Love ourselves some Zerg players. Definitely need more of those. Definitely need more Terran players. We've got plenty of Protoss players, but if you're a Protoss player, you can join us too. Why the hell not? In fact, I think I have a, a new Protoss player to debut sometime later on this week. So stay subscribed for more daily uploads as well. We do have a Fulcrum first for EUD. You can indeed build your second production structure for Terran a, a little bit faster. You don't have any tech requirements like that for this structure. It is considered a basic one. So it's not like StarCraft 1 where you need the barracks first. No, you just go straight to mech if you want it. Now, Leviathan, I'm not sure how uh, learned he is, but it looks like he's going to do what a lot of new Zergs try and a, do a low ground expansion. Now, I'm not so sure that the Mason spotted that, but it should have been on the periphery. And look at this pool placement too, blocking a path that maybe vultures or some other such units could dive on through. Might make defending from a drop a bit hard, but luckily for him, the spawn position is not really in such a place where he has to worry about that too much, which is pretty cool. A Little bit of harassment workers slapping each other on the asses. This is illegal in most workspaces now. Oh my God, he manor burrows him. Inviting him to the hole, perhaps. The vulture is indeed on the way. Pool will uh, pop up as the vulture gets there. So this could get a little bit dicey a little bit quickly. Instantly two pairs of quasi. So, you know, that's pretty good for Levy. It shows that he's maybe uh, watched the project a little bit. Maybe has seen a couple of things. I'm just going to go ahead and borrow those. Now, the vulture can reveal them, but it looks like EUD is having a bit of a hard time actually focusing down those ones. And look at that, even covering the wounded one with a uh, full health one. Now it does end up going down anyway. Two workers is pretty good for EUD in this position. Uh, oh man, you would have loved to have that guy uh, block the vulture so it doesn't get away with its life, but uh, such is life, right? Or death for those workers. And it is just gonna be a straight up, uh, you know, single fulcrum vulture tick as the quarry has been added on, creating another production queue for Terrans. Now talk to me if you think this is crazy, but I was thinking recently, what if we made the treasury cost less time, but the quarry cost more time? And then I think it would be even more of a concern for Terran players, like, as of right now, it costs 30 seconds, but what if it's like 45, and then you're blocking yourself off of, mul of uh, three workers for uh, putting it down? So it's a much more of a time cost before you can think about doing it, but you can make it off of your treasury a little bit easier, right? There's, there's possibilities there, there's thoughts there. Circuit for defense, the quasi-attack getting stymied by those lobotomy mines that the vultures are capable of. And this is one of the defining features of Shattered Temple. It is a situation where, ooh, that was a good good attempt there, but uh, blocked by the hatch placement. Nice stuff. Uh, the, the vultures obviously uh, can play around the extremity here by the ramp, but Leviathan putting down a hatch is really quite solid because it means that you can't just easily bypass that and go up the ramp. Now you kind of have to engage into where the Zerg are setting up. Man, I love to see that already. That's a that's a, a play that's surprisingly kind of big brain. And by, I don't mean to imply that I would expect small brain things from Levy. It's just, he's kind of new. So you'd think, oh, you know, this is, I think I'll play it on his first day or second day. So he's played a lot of games. I, he was at, he was posted something like, I am at work dreaming of playing or something like that <laughs> the other day. Just, I, I want to give a shout out. I saw EUD uh, and uh, Pasarinho talking about how uh, Pasarinho said, I am addicted to Cosmonarchy. I must play more games. And then uh, EUD was like, 
I wake up in a cold sweat thinking about Terran versus Proton. <laughs> and it's just, these guys, man, the fact that they like the game so much that they want to keep on playing, that's really cool. I'm, uh, I'm happy that they're happy and uh, that they're interested and that they're compelled to play as much as they can. That's, that's definitely like a sign that we're on the right track. Now, EUD is going to go for his expansion, and it's characteristically later than the Zergs. Uh, I will say that Levy has been uh, harvesting a little bit more from the... Oh, no, is he? I think he's going at the ridge and the gas at the same value. Okay, never mind. I always like to keep watch. Like, do these new players know about the resource mechanics? Um, yeah, the, the, third, the second worker on the ridge could be a third worker on the geyser. Uh, but I think it's like basically identical. It's just this at this placement, you might want the geyser instead. Other than that, though, pretty solid. Goes for the Hydrath Den, and he's going to go up to five Hydras immediately. Hydras are pretty powerful units in Cosmonarchy on the current release build. Uh, they And the pre-release build, actually, they're, they're exactly the same right now. Um, but uh, on pre-release, we'll be testing some changes where maybe we decide to knock their durability down a little bit or reduce their armor pen uh, so that they are much more... Uh, or moderately more affected by armor. As you can see right now, they deal 10 damage and they have two armor pen. Uh, but you can imagine maybe if you're up against the Goliath with two armor and you don't have any armor pen and you're starting to deal eight damage per hit, then maybe Goliath Cleric can sustain through that a little bit more. Uh, there's definitely some Protoss arguments there as well, like the Dracodin or the, you know, a Tecton eventually or whatever. Although I think once those kinds of units pop out, the uh, late game units, you're talking about uh, Hydra's already falling off a little bit. But, you know, it's something to point out. Vulture in the middle of the map does end up getting bopped. The mine's catching him. Now, he must be happy, because if he's played versus Mech Terran and he doesn't have his uh, Avaleths out all over the place, then, you know, his Hydras just get absolutely eviscerated, right? So imagine a world where uh, that doesn't happen. That's all. Just wanted to point that out. Imagine having a mine that doesn't deal 225 damage. Imagine that. You don't have to imagine that. That's Cosmonarchy. Still not a good idea to stand on top of your own mines, though. We've seen that time and time again. Stockade coming to support what EUD has on offer. I am a little bit worried about his position here, although he's getting up to a very healthy worker count, still uh, over his opponent's worker count by a considerable amount. And going for the ski back is Levy going for a third base as well. So already starting to get set up here. I don't see a third base in the cards just yet for EUD, but after his initial Anseal from his star pad, he is going to go for a Trojan. So I would imagine he'll try to do a Cyclops drop in the uh, worker line, get some good damage there. The Cyclops are pretty effectively used. In fact, there was just a, just a brief discussion on the server about like, you know, what's good for transport unloading? And uh, some people were saying maybe you go for the, uh, you unload and you like task the unload order onto the transport so that they drift and decelerate while doing that. Oh man, so many Bactyls just got queued up. Yeah, that's a little bit scary. There's not that many Goliaths here. There's no Phalanxes, no Palladiums at all. And he's transfer transferring into Bio. Yeah, this is potentially quite dangerous here, but EUD's going to take the long route, not going to bother going through the 9 o'clock position. He has no idea, but it's totally open and would absolutely bamboozle Levy. Instead, uh, Leviathan now spamming out a large number of Zethracores as he makes his 10 Bactyls and additional Hydras. This could be a very deadly timing especially considering the four Cyclops just left the building. It's only four of them, but they do have a, a, a purpose here because of the uh, sustained splash damage that they'll be able to deal as long as they can stay behind the, the Vultures. But the Bactylisks might help snipe them as well. Fourth base coming now for Leviathan. The macro sense for this guy, definitely up there. And not currently being challenged as a exploratory Zethracor pops its way in just to see that the uh, ramp is continuing to be held. Enjoying the high ground advantage over here, it looks like. That's what is on Levy's mind. And we have another treasury going down. Might be uh, thinking about hopscotching down to that low ground third base. Or could be going for 9 o'clock instead. But expanding towards your opponent as Terran is not always the best of times. There's not really that much over here for defense. The circuit is nicely placed. But it won't cover the uh, left-hand side here, and I think that's exactly what is being expected. As the attack force moves forward, though, and Leviathan is a little bit over fixated on this. He has not looked back at his uh, workers just yet. So he's going to check his main shortly, I'm ima uh, imagining. Still has not looked there. Still has not looked there. His workers are still dying. They're, okay, now he's seen it. Now he's paid attention. Okay, now I'm under attack. Got to station the Azirocores in the mineral line there. That's going to be able to clean this up pretty easily. And it looks like uh, EUD only looked back 
just in time to watch. However, a bunch of workers still go down there at the end of the day. Five or six Droleths, thanks to that drop, plus all of the ones that were slaughtered in the main. EUD once again having the worker advantage, but I think in large part due to that attack. I think it uh, would have been tied up at the very least, if uh, not for Levy going even higher, actually. But he's got up, going up to a fourth base. Nine o'clock is the way for EUD. Gonna go ahead and hunker down at this spoke. Calling his opponent forward if he wants to mess with him. And the Iral Iris going down, not exactly within sight range of that Trojan, but pretty close. Again, we don't have like a... Uh, eventually, I, I definitely want to do some sort of like custom structure mutation graphic that's like special for the uh, tech structures. I feel like that would be a nice little touch. A couple of the body mines going to be going by the wayside nice and early thanks to those quasis. There's another one over here very nicely placed to stun multiple of the Zerg units that are supposed to try to shield off of the Bactyls, who are going to start to take sustained fire from this forward phalanx. I'm not so sure that this front line can hold for Leviathan. He is going to have to pull on back. Thankfully, another couple of shots here for last few units, but he does have a lot of production, a lot of Hatcherosks. I think we're up to like, let's see, three at the fourth. We've got four, yeah, five. Okay, so he's up to eight hatch production. No Larvosks in sight. Tier two nearly complete. Can upgrade his pool and his scab into additional options or go straight for something else. Going for uh, six Bactyls to join the fight as well. Really wants to make use of those bounce attacks, I guess. Something that EUD was mentioning is that the Anseals were uh, mostly getting shut down by Gorgricors, by none other than Saiyan KCM, who has been playing for a little bit now as well as a Zerg player. That's quite interesting. I, I'm I'm uh, I'm here for it. The Etaf. That's an, uh, another interesting choice. Empty Trojan moving around, seeing what it can do. I think right now what would really be nice is if he grabbed that uh, swamp. If he upgrades the scab into the swamp and goes for Tethzorakors, you can certainly start to see the uh, Zerg army staying alive for a very long time. They also deal some melee splash damage, like in a radius around them. So that helps with their lifesteal, but also with their ability to cut through the Anseal shields and with some of the healing that is being done. But you can see UD's very practiced with this move. He's gonna charge forward with some Harakans to rend the armor. Those Iziracors not going to stay alive for very long. Here comes the flank on the right-hand side though. A lot of Leviathan's forces have been waiting for this moment, charging on forward to shred all of the bio. There are hardly any clerics left and certainly hardly any Harakans left as well. But most of the back line is still present with all of the phalanxes. None of the single one has died just yet, it looks like. Maybe a single one off to the right, actually. A couple of other units just scattered around. More and more reinforcements coming. The Bactylus count only at five right now. It has been regressed a little bit. There's a couple more off to the side, maybe. What more does he want to do? He's making Evigralisks, not a bad shout, but he's going to pull the trigger before he can even do that. And the first Goliath gets popped immediately. The Anseals called into question as their shields are failing. We have more and more pushes coming out from the right-hand side as well, but no more front line. And he cancels the attack before he can finish off that Cleric. All of these Phalanxes were very low on the right-hand side. That could have gone very, very well for him. But instead, he's going to wait for more Evigralisks. They can sustain a walloping amount of damage, but there's a lot of phalanxes to give out such amounts. Seven Almaxilisks on the way. Leviathan definitely has a superior Vespine income right now, but his mineral income is going to be a little bit beleaguered, especially as this base starts to get set up here for EUD. A fifth has been set up on the top right. That's the natural for the top right spawn. Maybe a Leviathan can think about going a little bit further, but the Terran army is encroaching. Mech into Zerg, an interesting look. Leviathan not monitoring his attack force, gonna hemorrhage one of his Evigralisks early. It's a little bit of an expensive unit, mostly on the mineral side, again, which might actually be where Leviathan needs to worry the most. Setting up some uh, you know, anti-harassment defense in the top right right now, just trying to hold that natural as more Amaxilisks get ready to hatch. You could use those to focus things down. You look at this composition, we've got one Goliath, one Cyclops. Is that really it for the... Uh, for the anti-air, yeah. So this could absolutely get uh, pushed back, but I, I almost wonder if maybe Mutas wouldn't be a better option. However, Leviathan does not have a Spire. He's been gunning it for just the Eteth right now, investigating all of those units, taking advantage of all of those options. Back in EUD's base, he's got a bunch of idle workers at nine. He's starting to take the bottom right third. More and more setup coming up there at the 
low ground third for him, but of course that was his fourth base, it must be said. A couple of additional phalanxes being set up here. Might start to aggro more of the forces for Leviathan. But is this going to be what EUD really wants? He's already started to be uh, attacked and, and harassed by a single air unit. What's his reaction? A couple of Mavericks? That's not going to help. Okay, the Lobotomy Mine does end up stunning some of the Elmaxilisks, and this one Goliath might be able to turn away a couple of this play. But really, at this point, this right-hand side has to be dismantled and fallen back. The Phalanxes are getting destroyed. Your one Goliath cannot save you right now. So as that Goliath falls, that brave warrior, more and more units are congregating up here, but none of them can shoot up. The fatal flaw of EUD's game plan, the Elmaxilisks coming out. What can EUD, our Terran Sovereign, do in this situation? Anseal's not being the focus fire. I wonder if maybe they should have been. Phalanx is another great target, though. If you can thin the herd here, you can really slow down the next attack because these are like a linchpin of this force. Another a good option is the Shaman or the Clerics. They're, not, they're being ignored for now, but Leviathan also falling back a little bit. He has shift queued a couple of moves. We'll see how much more he can end up doing. Taking that top right main, saturating the top right natural. He's in a pretty good position. Has he done enough? I'm not so sure. A lot of idle workers still at nine o'clock, saturating the mineral and gases as he starts to cap his tier two well on, uh, well completed the tier three on the way. EUD's game plan is to bypass most of the tier two options. He hasn't built a single tier two structure other than the Sentinels. Can he hold out long enough or will Leviathan just step on him with these air units? Remember, there hasn't really been any options done here. Nice stun from that lobotomy mine, but there's no punish. No Cyclops, no Madrigals, no sort of crowd control to deal with this. Instead, it's all of just a bunch of Goliaths. And sure, they are low in number, but right now they are not being attacked and the end seals are protecting them. The yeah, Maxilisks have to fall on back. Bit of a missed opportunity there, it has to be said, for Leviathan. He could have focused down this army with the air units exclusively before that Goliath count got too high. But his gas is starting to take a beating. He has not capped any of his geysers, despite being at tier two. I think before his opponent, but at the very least on par. Yeah, no geyser caps whatsoever. He did resaturate his gases after the raid, so it's not like he's been, you know, missing a bunch of them. Oh, it looks like maybe he's only got one guy on gas in his natural, so that might be a piece of the puzzle that never got put back into this place. Now Max trying to make a good engagement out of this. The uh, Anseals staying alive for a very long amount of time, but they were finally out of energy. Only three of them were ever made. The Evigralisks coming in the clutch here to sustain through all of this Goliath and, and Phalanx damage. So it looks like this push will be stopped. Leviathan will preserve the top half of the map. Splitting it up. A lot of these Phalanxes deploying mid-map. Just a couple of lobotomy mines over here that are going to get swept. And Leviathan will pretty soon start to maybe march on this 9 o'clock position. Those workers finally getting sent off to do things. But the Daedala is done. And we immediately have a switch into Iron Foundries. So maybe Le Leviathan is going to have to contend with the late game tier 3 Terran army. He doesn't again. He's not up against any uh, crowd control here for versus air. Nice lobotomy mine onto a lot of what EUD already has. Can these Sentinels be broken? The Watchdog starting to dish out a little bit of anti-air damage. Only four Goliaths remain. It looks like that's enough to give Leviathan pause. 4,000 minerals, no Zorkish Shroud in sight, and he's not building Iziracores either. So his mineral dump certainly lacking right now as he throws Hatrosks down willy-nilly. Off-center, may they be. Workers being, uh, trying to send over to take 9 o'clock, revealing that this has been where EUD's third base was this entire time. So it looks like maybe this lower third will end up being the option for Leviathan's attack, considering how to charge on forward a little bit. Not really that much on the harassment side from EUD, having to deal with a macro machine instead. Again, the money count getting pretty ab out of hand right now, but EUD banking some of his... Adding on those future stations, it will be penumbras for him. But his lower third is going to get engaged, so he will be down to four bases in just a moment here. Yeah, that treasury ain't going to make it out of there either. Nice little pickoff here for Leviathan as he goes for 30 Skithric cores at this stage in the game. Well, you know, Anti-Air has been a significant thorn in uh, EUD's side insofar as he just hasn't gotten it. He just hasn't been building them. 
So now he's got to worry about an attack coming from the right hand side through this very narrow choke. It must be said, this is an absolute like death pit for the ground units facing off into phalanxes and sentinels if they get set up there. There's only one of them right now. Repairing this setup a little bit. Bunch of Kagralisks here as well. What can the Scyther cores do? 33 Izira cores? Yeah, I mean, you, listen, dude, you've got lots of minerals. You can make that like three or four times over now. Waypointing a bunch of workers down to the right-hand side and has split the map at this point. So EUD on four bases, Leviathan, he is living up to that kind of name by taking so many more. We're talking about seven base Zerg right now. No wonder the money's out of the woodwork. Needs to throw down like 10 more hatches and definitely think about tier three. He has the Vespin for it now. Will he end up mutating it? He's uh, He was in the oper operating vicinity there for just a moment with his uh, camera. Definitely been thinking about it. Yeah, and there we go. It gets started. All right. 20 minutes into the game, and the Zerg is ascending towards that tier three. A very important timing, but we've got Magnetars coming out of this Nanite assembly, and Yamato can be absolutely deadly. We already have one. Didn't, uh, sort of prowling the battlefield with everything else. You gotta watch out for this. Yamato cannon deals AOE as opposed to the StarCraft 1 Yamato gun, which only deals single targets. It does take a little bit longer to channel, and it does take all of the energy of the Magnetar, but we've got very different energy rules anyway. We also have two Penumbras prowling on top of all of the smaller units, sort of towering over them. This is a force that I'm not so sure Leviathan can step to right now. He's mostly got a tier one arsenal. He's gonna go ahead and try to commit on it, but you gotta watch out for that Yamato, and you gotta watch out for the Penumbra shots. All of the Scyther core is getting absolutely melted almost instantaneously. I don't even wanna calculate the Vespin and another Yamato for even more damage. The Evigralisks actually staying alive despite all of that DPS, but these Penumbras are going to stand tall. And even though most of the mech has fallen, the lesser mech has indeed fallen for EUD, he can replenish those. Those are not the high tier units that take forever for him to get up and running. Claymore is being started as well. He's got some dilettantes coming out of his single apothecary. Love to see that. Would love to see some silver tongues as well. He's got the resources for it. Although, I mean, I don't even know if you need that. Seven steps would not be a bad shout. I know people probably don't even know what unit I'm talking about anymore. And if you're new around here, you probably don't know what any of these units are, but don't worry. Just keep watching the explosions on the screen, dude. What else do you want? We've obviously got loads here. We've got 50 units per race. So many cool mechanics and abilities. That air stacking, not exactly one of them. We're not a fan of air stacking, but this is how it is in Brood Wars engine. We'll see about we uh, correcting that when we move on to our next game in our own engine. Stay tuned for that, by the way. That'll be coming next year. Kagralisks massing up in the middle of the map alongside all of these Almax. I'm, I'm a little bit concerned, though. I, I really don't see what Leviathan is planning on doing here versus the Magnetars. He's probably never been in this position before. Prowling up with a very high-tech army. Claymore is for the slow to stop any uh, incoming units for the approach. Okay, I'm starting to maybe believe a little bit because in addition to the uh, Axtoth Axis, which is being made, I have no idea where. I'm, I'm scanning around. Okay, he's making them on the top right main. So the Matraval Nest, he already made over here, so that's a mistake. But the Grotto for the Kiskathalor and the Axis for Excitralisks, a great choice. Sure, this base doesn't get taken, but it wasn't being mined anyway. It's a fine thing to lose. We do not have we do have some gas caps as well to afford a little bit more Vespian. He's got so many minerals that he could be spending, but you know what? That's everybody's learning curve here. How do I spend my minerals? Like, just look at this number. He's got 69 military units. Nice. But imagine if he had like 369 because he made a bunch of Zeths or a bunch of Izira cores or a bunch of Zorius off of the Shroud. You know, Ultra cores could be a big factor here. Sustained through all the damage that's being dealt to them. Force uh, Mag uh, Magnetar Yamatos in friendly fire. This base, not of too much consequence, but it does suck to lose one of your original bases. It also bisects the Zerg's sort of command structure here. There's no Nidases up, which I'm a little bit surprised by considering he's a Brood War player. All right, falling on back. He doesn't really have the army to deal with this just yet. 11, 11 Kescathalors being started right now. None of them in this location. This is where Nidus's would be really nice. Instead, he's gonna see if he can sidestep those Yamatos. He doesn't know it yet, but you can dodge those. Apparently Leviathan's forces cannot. A meaty shot. The Magnetar is dealing 6,000 damage with some of their shots and the mains are indeed going to be pretty much absolutely destroyed. I mean, I don't know what more you can do from this position, but these are all depleted bases, so there at least there's that. Ma the Magnetars are starting to get focused down. 
Okay, one of them has fallen. It's a Pyrrhic victory compared to the amount of impact it actually had. Another Magnetar moving in, lumbering in to replace the fallen one. And now it's not a mistake to make that extra nest because your uh, first one is going to die. So there is that. Is it tr tr yeah, creating more. More Kiscathalors. Now, those don't shoot up. You need some other anti-air solution. Man, I, if only he mutated his Eteth and got some uh, Acrimnalisks or some Algoztalisks, maybe then we could see some serious power. He's uh, gr gathering his strength. The Kiscathalors slowly moving their way towards the 3 o'clock position. I, I find it really hard to imagine EUD dropping this game at this point, but there is a huge mineral bank for Leviathan. I think, you know... There, there's the makings of a comeback. He rebuilt his tech over on this side. He could be going for Massic Citralisk. Mortothacors and Evigralisks do not help him versus air units. So the Magnetars will indeed reign supreme and stay alive for a very long time. But, but they don't one-shot Kescathalors. They don't one-shot Evigralisks. They do one-shot Mortothacors, I think. But they're in small numbers right now anyway, so they wouldn't be a significant uh, force. Yeah, they'll one-shot those guys. All right, Leviathan now facing a standoff here. His opponent hasn't left the four base mark. That's one thing that you can point to, that EUD, I wouldn't, it's hard to say all in, he's got a pretty big bank, but he has not gone past the four base mark point. Now, here's the big slow Zerg ar arsenal, which is very strange to say about a Zerg arsenal, moving up to see if they can cover and ma mass up and the high ground. This is a good positional move. And now the Cascathalor shots are absolutely going to shred stuff over here. They will deal with the Penumbras as well, if given the opportunity. But what can you do about the air units? You have no anti-air. It's like an inverse of what happened earlier in the game. The Cascathalors are just absolutely walloping all of the Terran forces off to the right-hand side. The Penumbra are starting to crack. They're standing in time in those damage fields. The Kiscathalors are staying alive. There's only, what, six of them down so far? Okay, and three more end up going down, but the Penumbra are almost all gone. Heavy artillery, Gazithalors as well. Okay, maybe if he can take these Gezis and turn them into Alcagelisks, he can start to face off against the Magnetars. That's basically his, like, his sort of prevailing hope right now. If he goes for a Swamp, he can go for Vithralisks. So that's the old Devourer. There's a couple of options there. He's got so many sort of scattered around units. Still mining on more bases than his opponent. It has to be said, he's still at five bases relative to his opponent. I guarantee you from this position, there has never, and I mean never, been a position where EUD has fought against this kind of composition. And th that's despite him playing so many games. Leviathan's Cascathalor is charging forward. The Mortothacor is empowered by seeing all of those deaths are start going to start providing some very nice friendly fire as the Penumbras just get absolutely torn asunder. Now, the one problem is the Cascaths are all uh, going to start dying. They cannot really escape the uh, Magnetars as they keep pulling them towards them. Yeah, they're basically doomed, right? So trying to take that lower third, it's not going to happen almost certainly. He does have more Cascathalors over here and more about to finish. So it's not really the end of the world, but it means that he can't just easily attack forward. Man, taking a depleted base, that's not the position you want to be in. You want to be trying to take another base that's not so depleted, right? Maybe this is time for these 12 and 6 bases to take into effect. He got, what, how many quarries? He's got three out of four of his bases equipped with quarries. He could be making three taluses per rotation and... Uh, channeling them onto here. I'm not even sure what EUD's uh, bank is right now. Like, he could be putting down more structures down here on the low ground or on his uh, natural base. Taking a, another attempt at taking this base. Okay, Leviathan is persistent. He hasn't retaken that one, but I guess it's partially depleted, so maybe it's a little bit less uh, significant. Trying to mass up. He's still got so many minerals, man. Adding more hatches, you could do like 30 more and still have plenty of uh, cash to splash, right? What's the consideration here? The Terran army has uh, not really grown to its former size, right? Again, where are the extra bases? We don't know. We haven't seen them yet. But my god, man. Leviathan with a crazy debut going all the way up the tech tree. This is not that un that uh, unremarkable. or uh, Sorry, this is not that remarkable a crazy amount of a mineral float. I mean, it's a lot of minerals, right? You can absolutely build more units than that. And he's starting to realize that. He's like, okay, let me just start spamming down a million hatches. Because why not? I have the build space and I have the mineral count. So he's going to start to take steps to correct that. Because I think he's figuring out that the chaff will allow the Penumbra to start splashing the, the Terran zone units. Including the Magnetars, if you can get on top of them with Iziracores or something. So the Iziracor is like a uniquely good unit into this composition. If you don't need to trade efficiently. 
But even, I'm not even sure if that's true. Like, I feel like you would trade efficiently. All right, adding some more. Still no evolved uh, Den, so that's a bit of a, a, a miss. Uh, Leviathan definitely knows a lot more about the Zerg Arsenal now after a bunch of games than he does here. We have a Hippogriff on the field for some anti-ground splash. Very long range stuff. We'll see if it ends up being significant. The Magnetar's pulling those Xerocores closer and closer. The ground army just gonna get shellacked by all these Cascathalors. The artillery doing crazy work here for Leviathan's forces. I'm still waiting for a more decisive move from either one of our players. Wellbores, the tier three gas cap being activated. There are so many Magnetars starting to stack up here and we have no Alcagelisks. We have no heavy anti-air, but all of the ground has been completely annihilated. Speed tanks, you never see that. Well, now you know why. Cascathalors are speeding their units up when they target an enemy. Could focus fire these penumbras, try to finish them off. Yeah, indeed, there's uh, one with 14 health and the other one with 88 health. So shout out to Biddy B. All right, he's taken up his uh, opponent's main. What a crazy match. Spend down to the last dollar for EUD, still keeping his money relatively low. I mean, he had 4K float earlier, but Leviathan, on the other hand, still rocking that 16K. Combine the two of them, you could make it to 20 again. But you know what? 25, 35, I zero. Yeah, just keep spending that money down, man. Just keep doing it. You're still in this. You can still make this happen. Dude, a 30-minute banger for Leviathan's debut? I never would have suspected. I never would have guessed. You couldn't have told me that this would be his cast over debut. And this is like one of 50 matches he's already played, probably. Maybe I'm overestimating. But just crazy stuff, dude. Crazy stuff. If anybody watched Hit'em Up SC back in the day on Twitch, that's who you're watching play Zerg and Cosmonarchy now. Worlds do collide. Strange things do happen. And honestly, the Penumbra count has started to dwindle a little bit. I mean, he does still have five of them. There's still plenty of casks. I feel like if he can kill the, the Penumbra before the rest of the ground army commits, he'll have such an advantage in terms of his arsenal that it, it feels really hard for EUD to can, commit off of that. Or if all the Penumbra kind of get focused on one thing. But right now, they're just penetrating so many, so many Zerg at once. And anything that the Magnetars catch, they pull back into the effective range of the rest of the army, roving back and forth. There's a couple of Cascathalor shots. We love to see those. Oh no, Dilettante. Well, uh, we need a new Helldiver reporting for duty right there. Ideally one that doesn't have a Korean anti-cheat that uh, destroys performance. That would be nice. Too bad all of those guys complaining about Helldiver's account locking didn't uh, also complain about the uh, low FPS thanks to the anti-cheat. That would have been nice to, to get complaints about. Uh, I don't want to run a rootkit. In, in actuality, it's, I'm fine running a rootkit, but I don't feel like creating a Sony account. <sighs> I mean, sure, both of them are enough to, in the same world, to co totally uh, ignore and uh, not download and not install and not play a game. But a Phobos, there's a Phobos operational. Now that's a reason to, to play this game, dude. Just look, look at that Phobos. Look at this Hippogriff. Look at this Cascathalor. All right, don't 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 look too closely at the Cascathalor, but it, just, it, it's a cool game. Play the game. Play the cool game, dude. All right, massing up. It's in one blob. The Cascathalors love this. A Vilgoracor, uh, better late than ever. I was gonna say, this might be the only late game Zerg that's played without a without a, a Metrival Nest unit actually being deployed, but the Vilgoracor changes that. All right, where's the engagement? He's trying to set up for the surround. The big force can definitely charge on in here, but the front line is doing absolute wonders. UD staying alive for now. The Cascathalor is raining hell from the far. Shot after shot landing on these poor Penumbra that are kind of stacked up against each other. Where's the anti-air though? They can't really burst through the Magnetars. The Yamato Kuns haven't even needed to come out yet. The Quasis are shooting the Magnetars. I've never seen this before. More and more Zerg raining on. All the ground units are going to be annihilated. And apparently that's enough EUD. He doesn't feel like he can continue. What a massacre of a final fight. And Leviathan claims victory in that game? Dude, no way. That's his round. And it's down to his resources. Dude, you saw EUD was better with his units, better with his structures. He didn't expand very fast. And when he did, he didn't really uh, seem to have either enough of an anti -air, like an air force to really overwhelm his opponent, or he, uh, I don't know, dude, that's just a weird composition he's probably never faced before. Uh, but the Hippogriffs weren't a bad shout. 
Uh, I feel like more of those could have definitely been uh, affording him some stuff. I didn't really look at his base. I was too busy shocked at the 20k mineral float. And then Leviathan still makes it work at the end of the day. Dude, crazy shit. Crazy shit. All right, dude. We're going to see more of this guy later. GGs. And remember, uh, get Cosmonarchy and send us money on coffee. Peace.